All right, folks, from the land of the midnight sun right up here in northern Canada, Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, home of the Ice Road Truckers and also home of me, Jack Antonio. You are listening to Do You Know Jack radio show, and I've got Tom of Soul Remnants on the line with me right now. How are you doing, sir? Doing excellent, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you know, I I, I listened to the new record. Um, is it? Uru, Uru Boros. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. And uh, I thought, geez, uh, you know, this stuff is heavy as fuck, so I have to have one of these guys on the show. So I just reached out blindly on the old social media and uh, showam. I got you on the line. Yeah, I appreciate you reaching out and finding us all the way from uh, Yellowknife out there in Canada, you know. Um, We've been we've been going at it for you know about a little bit over ten years now, uh, plugging away kind of in the underground, and uh, ended up inking a deal with Entertainment One, which I think got it out to the masses a little bit more. So um, yeah, we appreciate the uh, the feedback. Yeah, well, now a lot of people in this day and age say that they don't need to do it with a with a label, but I I would maybe almost disagree. I mean, you need that label support to a certain degree i would imagine so entertainment one's probably a good step in the right direction yeah yeah it certainly is man you know um our first couple albums were um the very first one was totally independent you know we definitely learned a lot on that one um you know between you know duplicating it ourselves getting it out there for review hitting the road and everything the second album we ended up doing with an indie label a mm-hmm. little bit of a bump but um you know i mean when you're getting um real label support and they're really doing like the the uh the big market pr campaigns and all that i mean it takes a lot off your plate when you're uh you know when you're a band just trying to kind of grow organically you know so um i think for us it works i think there's a lot of bands out there that can do it independently and they do a really good job with it but for us i mean we're so focused on you know day-to-day life and then music on top of it so i mean i think they're they, they've helped us out tremendously so far, and we're only just getting started with our relationship. So yeah, for sure. Well, now I, I I know for a fact that Entertainment One has their loud division, but I mean, how did Soul Remnants end up sort of dropping on the label radar? Um, well, they have. Um, we're actually working with them on an imprint uh, called uh, Lifeblood Inc. Right, right. And it's run by Trevor from. He's the front man of Unearth, and also um, a local producer engineer, Shane Frisbee who's from our area and uh, you know, unearth's also kind of local to us too. And right. um, they just liked what they heard and they happen to be the right people to hear it, you know? And um, there's a little bit of relationship there too, between Shane and our drummer. They were actually in a band called can I uh, oh, okay. back probably about, probably about 10 years or so ago. Um, so, you know, that kind of put us on their radar and um, you know, like I said, it just kind of was the right, good timing. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we they knew that we wanted to work. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of how it happened. Well, that that's almost 90% of the industry these days is just being in the right place at the right time. As a matter of fact, I don't think that aspect of the industry has ever really changed, even in the digital age. Oh, no, it's totally that way. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's as it is to say, because there's so many bands that are, you know, just busting their ass off, you know, out there. And, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. They just don't get the recognition that they deserve. And, you know, it comes down to a lot of factors, luck being one of them. Um, but, you know, having said that, you know, we're no slouches either. I feel like, you know, we've definitely been putting in the, putting in the time, you know, really mm. developing what we do yeah. through the underground type thing, you know. Yeah, well, it, now, now you know, a, a lot of people say it takes about 10 years of, of slugging it out there just to to break as a band. So, I mean, the fact that you guys have been at it 10 years and now sort of have that connection to a decent label is, is probably, you know, a testament to how much work you've done leading up to it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always thought that, like, t- you know, I look at some of my favorite bands and it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't hear about them until it was 10 years past their first album came out. You know, it happens sometimes, you know, there's other great bands in the genre. that's just like right in your face right away. But, um, yeah, I mean, our first record came out in 2009. So, you know, here we are, 2017, still working on it. I mean, you know, things are moving forward. So as long as we're not going backwards, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Well, speaking of going backwards, I I hear, you know, your, your musical upbringing was sort of, you know, you were, you were, you grew up in a musical environment, a musical family. Yeah, it's very true. Um, yep, from a young age, I was always exposed to a lot of rock and roll, you know, a lot of classic rock. 
kind of in my blood, you know, um, growing up, uh, learning, you know, obviously Aussie tunes, mm -hmm. uh, Slayer tunes, Metallica, Iron Maiden, you know, Steve Harris. I started on bass, so, I mean, learning Steve Harris, that's kind of where I got my groove from, yeah. is um, all that old school, like, you know, heavy metal, and then even going further back to, like, 60s rock, you know, Zeppelin and uh, Sabbath and, uh, you know, all that good stuff, Deep Purple, love it. Did you have musical parents though? Did you have parents or grandparents that played? No, I, you themselves? know, my, um, my parents, not really. They weren't really musical. Um, I mean, my mother's family, it's like all her brothers and sisters. She comes from a really big family. Mm -hmm. They all play instruments and stuff, but my parents, uh, neither of them actually played anything. Um, my older brother was a drummer. Well, still is a drummer. And, uh, you know, a guitarist. And, um, you know, when I first got my guitar, I got it from my aunt back in the day when I was uh, about 13. I'd been begging my parents, but we didn't, you know, we didn't really have a lot of money back in the day. And uh, yeah. my aunt lent me this really cheap acoustic classical guitar. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just got, I just fell in love with the thing and, um, you know, struggled to play it for a long time. And my brother was, you know, definitely a major influence on getting me to stick with it and um when i ended up moving out of that town that i used to live in um i met up with some of the guys that are actually in soul remnants now and i kind of just wanted to be in a band and i told them you know oh yeah i can play i can play all this stuff and uh <laughs> i really couldn't and i just kind of <laughs> learned the hard way and i just kind of had to try to keep up and um you know and i just always stuck with it so that's kind of self-taught how i came up the, the tried and true method of sitting in front of that CD player and just trying to figure out what the hell the guys are doing, eh? Yeah, you know, it was just one of those things. I didn't want to be the guy playing all the wrong notes forever because, you know, <laughs> it was really, uh, you know, I was in way over my head when I first started playing in a band. But, you know, I guess that's the story of the old bass player, you know. But yeah. I ended up gravitating towards guitar a little while after that, and that's when I really started to take it seriously. And, uh, you know, I knew that once I got to that level it was like okay now i'm gonna have to really step it up and uh that was that was a while back now so still still a work in progress always trying to get better you know but that's uh kind of my story yeah now i understand there's been a bit of an evolution to the soul remnant sound but i mean i'm even more curious to know how you evolved from that sort of you know liking so to speak of the classic metal into you know this sort of raging you know caveman angry death metal kind of sounding stuff <laughs> yeah well um i always liked you know i guess i guess the gateway to that was slayer because slayer was like my favorite band i used to listen to show no mercy like four times a night every night before i would go to sleep when i was in high school and like you know all their all the classic 80s stuff and um kind of moved over towards like the more progressive sounds of you know death for example you know mm -hmm. like the um leprosy album uh human and individual thought patterns symbolic those albums really were really uh you know kind of bridge that gap too between like the you know the thrashy progressiveness you know and bands like megadeth even though they're not aggressive vocal wise i mean like the speed and the aggression is there yeah um so you know that kind of stuff was just kind of what i gravitated towards i had a really big phase of being into like the uh the gothenburg sound as well back then i was really into uh you know, bands like In Flames and Dark yeah. Tranquility back in like the late 90s. And um, Dissection was another huge band that was influenced on me. So those bands all still kind of have that, you know, twin guitar harmony parts and a lot of like quality riffing. But they just kind of brought it to another level yeah. uh, as far as, you know, as far as aggressiveness goes. So I don't know, you know, that's just kind of the way stuff started coming out for me. And that was like when I started writing music. I was like, you know, I'm just going to do what feels most natural to me and mm -hmm. what I want to do the most. And, uh, you know, it ended up being Soul Remnants, and that's just kind of the way I write, so that's what we do. Yeah, no, it, it, it's cool that you would bring up Death. I mean, I'm especially a big fan of the Human album because it has the, you know, two Cynic guys playing on it. And, of course, you know, after oh, yeah. Human, they left Death and went on and started to do their own thing with Cynic. And, but, but, I mean, all of those albums, like, you know, you, you can hear the, the Death influence in soul remnants for sure and even just the florida sound in general like th there's a certain chugging riffage which really reminds me of obituary i'm not sure how huge of an obituary fan you are but you know cla oh, yeah. classic oh, yeah, listeners of the show know that i'm uh, a total mark for those guys oh yeah yep i mean cause of death was definitely in heavy rotation for me and slowly we rot love both of those <laughs> albums 
you know, uh, Atheist is another pretty big influence on me. And, you know, you got early gore guts too. Yes. Um, Cannibal Corpse, Monstrosity, Malevolent Creation, all that old school death metal stuff. Um, I think what kind of shaped us too is that I don't really know a lot of the newer era of death metal stuff. I kind of got stuck. I mean, I'm not, I, I was born in 1983, but for whatever reason, I used to only listen to stuff between 1980 and 19, like 94. I don't know why, back mm-hmm. when I was younger. And that's kind of the stuff that I stuck with and I still always just listen to. And I guess I kind of <laughs> skipped a generation of being influenced by, you know, that, that other stuff. So I, I yeah, I just kind of wear my, uh, my influences on my sleeve, I guess. Yeah, now I notice you're, you know, like from what I understand, like you do a lot of the of the writing of the of the music for Soul Remnants, correct? Yeah, I do. I do the majority of it, I'd say. Now, now what I've noticed though is like you you really stress the power of the riff, up, you know, as opposed to maybe the the art of shredding, like and and the riffs themselves are really memorable and hooky, at least in terms of the uh, you know brand of death metal that you guys put out there. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I definitely like to put an emphasis on songwriting. Um, you know, fretboard gymnastics have a, have their place, and it's kind of not for me. Um, you know, I just I never got into the whole stuff that it takes too much time to digest. I'm really into stuff that you know you listen to it, you get that riff, you get that memory, you get that feeling of you know that you can headbang to it. And to me, that's what's most important. Yeah, we still have our parts where we probably go over the top, and I'm sure there's, you know, something to be said for that too. But um, you know, people that love it, you know, more power to them. But it's just not my thing. And yeah. uh, I, I know that I'm saying this, and it's probably hypocritical because there's probably plenty of heavy metal heads that listen to me and go, "Dude, what are you talking about? You guys are going nonstop insane." But <laughs> to me and to other people that listen to this kind of genre, it's probably a little bit subdued in some ways. Well, you know, you know what I, I've noticed about at least this record about Ouroboros is, you know, there is blast beats in there, but they're so carefully woven into the, into the songs that you barely notice them when they do happen. I I mean, I would imagine there's, you know, a bit of design there. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's like, you know, um, you can't, I don't know. You just can't overdo that kind of stuff because then it just becomes monotonous noise, you know? And, uh, like I said, I mean, I'm not trying to detract from the shit that people like, but I mean, I can't listen to stuff like that. Like, uh, a band like Origin, I mean, after a while, it just sounds like I'm getting hit in the head with a hammer. Or like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the band Brain Drill. It's like, wow, you guys can play your asses off. But I don't know. It just doesn't do anything for me, you know? So we try to make it be a, um, a build up in a way or like something that really will grab your attention when you mm-hmm. hear that blast and keep it special. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's what the original intention of the blast beat was, was something to grab your attention. And when you, when you overflow with blast beats and all that, you're just going to you know, become boring and that's just going to become the normal of your band. And, you know, you're going to kind of lose some of that power that it really, the beat was really uh, invented to have. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just thinking about, you know, being hit over the head. That's one of the main reasons me, you know, personally, I can't listen to a whole lot of black metal because that's all it seems to me now, you know, like I said, not trying to offend any, uh, you know, people out there that do, uh, you know, listen to black metal. I mean, if you want to go out and listen to black metal, more power to you. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's funny. It's like nowadays black metal is like either, you know, constant blasting and speed or like uh, like we played a show last night with I guess they were black metal bands, but it was like nothing but like indie uh, type like rock and roll beats. So I, I don't even know anymore. You know, I'm just like, OK, well, hey, like you said, I mean, it just is what it is now. But there's, there's plenty of good stuff if you know where to look. It's just yeah, yeah it can get it can get a little monotonous saturation the market's really saturated i i i see now that uh you know this this new soul remnants record is a uh, a bit of a concept album and i i think you you kind of had the concept in in mind before you wrote like it is is a concept record something you'd been wanting to do for a while <laughs> yeah it is um you know it's one of those things where we kept it somewhat you know, we kept it somewhat loose. If you go and you read through the whole lyric book, it does continue a story. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a it was a concept album from the beginning. We were going to do it and have this story about it. And, um, you know, it's like a dystopian type future where uh, a certain main character that's followed throughout the story kind of begins. Um, he begins in like a human factory almost where he kind of breaks through those chains and then gets 
cast out from society only to return and basically convince all of society to destroy itself. So that's the whole story in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of the outline. I came up with all the song titles, wrote the music, and, you know, obviously uh, my other guitar player, Chad, contributed some songs um, and a couple riffs here and there, and, uh, you know, the drummer. You know, we, we work as a band, so I don't want to sound like a pay trying to take all the credit for it. But anyway, I wrote, we wrote that part, and then we let Mitch, our vocalist, he does the lyrics, and he kind of fitted into the story outline that we kind of created. So that's mm -hmm. how that whole thing kind of married itself together. And it was important to, we, we basically want to make the songs flow together in a way that made sense. But we also, I didn't want to have it be overly dramatic. Um, I really am not a big interludes guy, like with, you know, like spoken word pieces and stuff just to sell the concept. I mean, King Diamond's probably the only dude that pulls that off that I still love, um, you know, but yeah, it's a concept album. That was that was kind of what we wanted to do from the get go, and uh, that's what it became. Fair enough. Well, you know what 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 you've what you've come up with though for this record. I mean, like I remember a few years ago, I was interviewing a different band, and and they were a thrash metal band, and I was like, so what's this record about? What are you writing about? You know, nuclear war and stuff. And they were like, oh, ha. You know, that's a little, uh, you know, I, I doubt there's any chance of that happening anytime soon. But now that we're living in such a uh, uh, unstable political climate, it yep. seems that maybe, uh, you know, this is this is a time. I, I don't know why I'm laughing because it's, you know, it's a pretty freaking scary time to, to be, uh, you know, on this planet because of a, a wide variety of things that are taking place that can almost bring you back around to some of those classic death and thrash themes in, in the music. Yeah. I know, I know. I mean, that's why this it's almost like this is just an exaggeration of where we're at, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's getting any better before it gets worse. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a reflection on society today in a lot of ways, what we're trying to say, but at the same time, it's, you know, obviously science fiction in, in a lot of other ways too. So, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, how I felt about it though, because I do think that we're pretty well fucked as society goes. <laughs> Right on, man. Well, listen, uh, Tom, it's been great uh, talking to you ab about a wide variety of subjects here on Do You Know Jack Radio Show, and you're certainly welcome to come back on as a guest whenever you and, and the band have something new that you're uh, that you're cooking up. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I really, really appreciate you having us on, and we'll keep in touch.